Live from KSA 12, the news at noon starts right now. Happening right now, Governor Greg Abbott is hosting former President Donald Trump for a border security briefing with state officials and law enforcement. Right now, we are seeing a live look at the room that we expect to hear both speak later this afternoon. We also are expecting them to take a tour of the unfinished border wall. We're going to be live streaming the briefing on KSAT.com. And obviously, we're going to have so much more from this visit tonight on 5 and 6 o'clock. Police, meantime, very busy here after a violent 12 hours in the Alamo City. At this hour, they're investigating at least three separate shootings. That's right. And in two of those cases, police are still searching for the suspects. The first shooting happened on the west side last night. Then this morning, there were two more shootings, one at a motel on the northeast side and another at an apartment complex on the north side. We will start on the west side where police believe a man was robbed and shot. This happening in the 400 block of South General McMullen. That's near West Commerce Street. Officers tell us the suspect is accused of hitting the victim and knocking him to the ground before shooting him and taking his bicycle. This happened around 11 last night. The victim taken to the hospital in critical condition. Investigators still searching for that suspect. Hours later then, on the northeast side, another shooting. San Antonio police questioning a teenager who they say shot and killed a 33-year-old man this morning. It was a deadly shooting. It happened in the parking lot of a day's in off I-35 in Whirlwind Drive near Windcrest. Stephen Cavazos with what police believe caused the shooting. It was an investigation that lasted several hours here at this day's end on the city's northeast side that ended with a 33 year old man dead and the investigation into his death now underway. It was around 530 this morning when police got the call about a shooting at the hotel. The man's body was found next to a red truck in the parking lot. He had been shot. While it's not clear how many shots were fired, police say the son of a 19 year old woman was the one who pulled the trigger. Details are so limited, but we are told this all stems from a domestic violence incident. Neither the teen or the men have been identified. Now, while the scene is clearing here at the days and the investigation into this deadly shooting is still underway. Now, San Antonio police do tell us that they took that 19 year old man in for questioning. However, it's not clear if he will face any charges. Reporting on the northeast side, Stephen Cavazos, KSAT 12 News. San Antonio police combing through the bungalow 09 apartments on the north side near 410 and Broadway after a man was shot and killed in between apartment buildings just after 7 a.m. I spoke with Chief McManus and neighbors about what happened and what comes next. Normally, I feel safe in this neighborhood. I walk my dog here every day. I don't feel I don't feel threatened or anything. Brittany Tilton lives at this complex. She was very surprised to hear that someone was shot and killed just yards from where she lives. Officers arrived on the scene. They found a male in the breezeway behind me uh, down, suffering from multiple gunshot wounds. They administered first aid. The uh, the victim. Uh, died in spite of their efforts. Investigator is telling me that they found a multiple shell casings here on the scene. I spoke with some neighbors who also tell me they've heard a lot of gunshots recently, and we just heard from Chief McManus that this attack was not random. This individual was targeted for whatever reason, but it was not like like most of these. This is not a random shooting, and that's what we have right now. We don't, I don't, we don't want to give out information on the vehicle just yet. Right now, San Antonio police are working to figure out what exactly happened and who is responsible. Chief McManus tells me they are still looking for multiple suspects and trying to figure out the relationship between the suspects and this victim. Now, we reached out to the Bear County Medical Examiner's Office, still waiting for the identity of the man who was shot and killed. Right now, we're told he is in his 40s or 50s, but police not able to tell us much more, not even able to confirm if the victim lived at this complex. Taking a look outside with live cam. Yes, it is happening again. Some sun, some clouds, <laughs> and the rain's popping up, right, Sarah? That's right, Ursula. Remind me of uh, weather deja vu. That's what we've got around the area as we're starting to see some more showers bubbling up out there. And in the afternoon, some of these will contain some flashes of lightning and periodic heavy rain in spots as well. Uh, you can see that down near the coastal communities for Beeville and Carnes County, even near Goliad, that's where we've got the flashes of lightning right now. And we've got some showers moving across Medina 
Oneida County uh, and into Bandera County and a few showers around Bear County. So let's zoom in uh, right near Petite in Floresville. We've got a few pockets of uh, heavier rain within these showers and on the west side of town just outside of Loop 1604 as you're traveling along Highway 90 to Castroville Hondo and even up to Rio Medina some of these showers as well. Zooming in even further you can see out near Leon Valley area uh, we've got a couple of light rain showers that are pushing to the northwest and further to the east out near uh, Selma and Schertz and also just inside of loop 1604 there some of these pop up showers as well. We're going to continue to see a few flashes of lightning into the afternoon, but no severe weather expected. The rainfall, although it's been pretty streaky over the last couple of days, there's plenty of areas that have seen a good amount of rain. Coming up, I'll show you those rainfall totals over the last three days. We'll talk about 4th of July weekend and I'll show you how this rain has impacted the aquifer and the pollen count. Ursula and Max. Thanks so much, Sarah. New this noon, deputies say a murder suspect turned himself into the Atascosa County Sheriff's Office. 63-year-old Jimmy Garsup indicted by a grand jury this month. It was wanted in connection with a deadly shooting near Highway 16 in Poteet. The deputies tell us back in February, Brad Rumfeld shot and killed near a taxidermy shop. Still not clear what actually led up to the shooting. Also this noon, San Antonio police investigating two separate robberies, and so far the suspects are still on the loose. That's right. First, on the east side, police searching for a man who they say stole an ice chest and hurt the victim while getting away. Now, police searching for this person. Officers tell us a man was having lunch at Henry's Mexican restaurant between I-10 and Highway 87. That's when he noticed the suspect stealing his ice chest from his truck. The victim confronted him, but officers say the suspect fought him off even when the victim tried to get in the suspect's vehicle. As that driver sped off, he actually ran over the victim's feet. And on the north side, police say that one suspect hit a fast food place. Officers tell us that they want to find this guy. He's accused of walking into a wing stop on Highway 281 in Evans Road on June 20th. Police say he walked up to a worker at a cash register and demanded cash and then took off. If you can help police with either of these cases, call Crime Stoppers at 210-224-STOP. Now to the latest on the pandemic here at home. The city of San Antonio is still trying to encourage more and more people to get vaccinated. The latest incentive, free Spurs tickets and San Antonio FC tickets. The city hosting two pop-up clinics, one at the AT&T Center on July 10th and the other at Toyota Field on July 17th. If you go to these sites to get your vaccine, you get a free SAFC ticket and you'll be entered to win a 10-game pack of tickets to go see the Spurs in action. So I'm asking all Spurs fans, as well as their family and friends who haven't yet received the COVID-19 vaccine, to make plans to be here at the AT&T Center on July 10th. It's going to be more than just a pop-up clinic. The Spurs food truck will be here on site, and SS&E will provide merchandise giveaways and more. Holy so far, nearly a million people across our community have gotten their vaccine. Meanwhile, though, that Delta variant is expected to become more prevalent, and the CDC is now saying that the strain accounts for more than a quarter of all new cases across the country, up from approximately 3% of new cases just over a month ago. ABC's Alex Brashay has the latest. Newly alarming numbers from the CDC. The highly contagious Delta variant now accounts for more than 26% of new cases in the U.S. In parts of the Mid and Mountain West, the CDC estimates it could account for more than 50% of new cases. The Delta variant now in all 50 states. Missouri being hit the hardest. Only 38% of eligible people there have been fully vaccinated, and new COVID-19 cases have risen by more than 76% in the last month. Health officials are urging the public to get those vaccines. We know from good studies that the Delta variant is protected against by the vaccines that fundamentally are being used here. And that's the reason why the CDC feels at this point they should not change their recommendation. In Los Angeles, county health officials are now recommending masks in public indoor spaces, regardless of vaccination status. I did take off my mask a couple weeks ago, but now with the new variant coming out, I am, I, I'm hearing of people getting COVID again and I'm getting a little bit nervous. They may understandably feel that they want that extra degree of precaution, and that is just fine. But the overall countrywide recommendation of the CDC 
has not changed. But today, more reopenings in states like Oregon and Washington, where vaccination rates are higher, those states lifting most restrictions. Officials in other major cities like Chicago and New York say they have no plans to revisit mask requirements. Alex Preche, ABC News, Washington. A mural in downtown San Antonio representing the stories of African-American men and women. Katrina Weber is going to tell us the inspiration behind this mural still ahead. And it's not quite time to rodeo San Antonio, not until February of next year, but it is time to get excited about the big names coming to the Alamo City. A look at next year's entertainment lineup right after the break. Late breaking news this noon, Pennsylvania's highest court overturning Bill Cosby's sexual assault conviction today after finding an agreement with a previous prosecutor prevented him from being charged in the case. What you're looking at right now is a live look at the prison that Cosby is being held at. Now he served more than two years of the three to 10 year sentence at the state prison near Philadelphia, charged in late 2015 when a prosecutor armed with newly unsealed evidence of Cosby's damaging deposition from her lawsuit arrested him days before the 12 year statute of limitations expired. Much more of that to come later today. Meantime, a Laredo native receiving a special honor. The mannequin or the Munikin on the new Orion spacecraft will be named after the late NASA engineer Arturo Campos. His family is over the moon, hearing he got enough votes for this. Campos passed away in 2004. He's known for helping to bring Apollo 13 back home safely after an oxygen tank on board exploded two days into the mission. Campos's oldest daughter says she and her sister are excited about their father's legacy and that it will live on. Oh my God, me and my sister Deanna Campos Rank and Yvette Campos Brewer are elated. He, he's going to be the Commander Campos. With, he won with over 300,000 votes. Woohoo! <laughs> The Campos Munikin will be sitting in the commander's seat and will be equipped with several sensors to record the data through the mission, throughout the mission to the moon. The information is then going to be used to protect astronauts on the new spacecraft for the next trip to the moon. All right, still several months away, but you can already start getting excited for the next San Antonio Stock Show and Rodeo. The entertainment lineup finally released a little early. Let's take a look. Hitting the stage next February, Toby Keith, Riley Green, Little Texas, Brad Paisley, might Ranger, Ramon Ayala, and Sticks. More entertainers expected to be announced at a later date, but tickets are now on sale. You can go to sarodeo.com for more information. What excites me, excites you in that lineup? Brad Paisley. Really? Yeah. Okay, so. <laughs> what about you? I'm gonna show my age. Sticks. I'm kinda liking yeah, this. Yeah, I get it. I, I remember <laughs> Sticks. There you go. I All was right. Just a young child. Well, but. hopefully the rodeo has better weather than we saw the last couple. Of well, days. you know what? The rodeo, though, you know that the weather can be a little crazy during the <laughs> rodeo. You know, this last time we had rodeo, we had the winter storm. So mm. let's see what happens. All right. Now the aquifer, though, is responding nicely to the aquifer. Uh, the aquifer is responding nicely to the rain, rather, that we've seen in the last couple of days, up three tenths of a foot for the past 24 hours. But unfortunately, the rain comes at a cost. Molds are very high today, past 18,000. And we'll be watching that number carefully because we have more chances for rain, not only today, but 4th of July weekend as well. Your forecast after the break. Welcome back and happy Wednesday. Did you happen to catch GMSA at nine this morning? I did not. Oh my goodness. If you missed it, one of the greatest Katie's Science Lab experiment moments ever. I can't wait to see it. So apparently Katie and David Sears made baking soda bottle rockets. What could go wrong? What could happen? <laughs> it was huh? so good. Using vinegar and baking soda. And it had a rocky start. The first rocket fell and exploded on the table. But then two other rockets after that were priceless. Let's take a look. Right. Our blue one. <laughs> <laughs> Your reaction. <laughs> reaction because they want to balance each other out. So that's what causes this reaction and and that's what gives you your your bottle launcher. And now we have a lot to clean up. Happy Fourth of July. Three. 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 Katie, but it takes practice then. It's not always gonna be the first time around. Right. Our blue one. <laughs> 
apparently there is like everyone's okay. Mm, everyone's fine. Everyone's There's some vinegar fine. on some equipment, but everyone is happy. Everyone's smiling. The best part is, I was talking to the producer Dylan about it. He was like, just as she was about to say, the blue one's not working. Shot sideways. <laughs> you know, the, I'm just glad that there was no like traffic. Or right. the, can you imagine driving your car in front of KSAT with a bottle on? And okay. Oh, so Sarah, what was your reaction to that? That was hilarious. <laughs> and on top of that, um, you could kind of smell Katie and David yeah. walking across the newsroom because it smelled like smell? vinegar. Yeah. I smelled that. Oh it was very God. funny. And, and of course, you can find that Katie Science Lab on KSAT.com and watch it in its entirety and more experiments that Katie and David have done together. Well, right now uh, outside, we are seeing a few pop up showers uh, as we have the last couple of days. And in fact, over the last few days, we've had some good rain. It's been pretty streaky in nature, but a lot of rain gauges have uh, been happy because they've been filling up with rainfall. Now, unfortunately for our western communities like Del Rio, Brackettville, Eagle Pass, the rainfall has been a little bit less beneficial, only about uh, 19 hundredths of an inch of rain officially out there toward Del Rio. But out near Canip, almost two inches of rain, a little bit more than three quarters in Kerrville and in Hondo, a little bit more than an inch in Pearsall, a little bit more than an inch of rainfall as well. And for the coastal communities, a lot more rain uh, Kennedy about an inch and a half and look out toward Houston area Sugarland uh, more than five inches of rain over the last three days out there. Let's zoom in a little bit closer to the metro area. The airport's officially seen a little bit less than six tenths of an inch of rainfall, almost three quarters near Stone Oak, six tenths at uh, Bulverde, and about almost three quarters in Bernie. Look at Pipe Creek, more than two and three quarters inches of rain out near Medina Lake, about an inch of rain as well, and near uh, Wilson County, up to an inch in spots. New Braunfels, more than an inch and a half and six tenths in Seguin. So yeah, a lot of folks have gotten some rain, and even if you've missed out on the rain over the last three days. If you're in some of these spots that don't show as much rainfall, you've got a chance to see rain today and tomorrow. Uh, pardon me, not tomorrow and the weekend as well. So let's go ahead and take a look at some of these radar images that we're seeing around San Antonio uh, and you zoom out a little bit further. You can see near Floresville and on that Atascosa line, seeing some good showers at the moment pushing off to the northwest gradually, uh, just near Rio Medina, Castroville and Hondo seeing some rain right on the western part of Bear County along Highway 90 there near Leon Valley and some showers out near the Palo Alto College area. Once again, this as we get into the peak heating of the day, we're going to see a few flashes of lightning with this as well. Uh, so into the afternoon, showers and storms will be scattered. Chance for rain is about 40% this afternoon as it has been for the rest uh, last few days as well. A high temperature in the upper 80s near 90 degrees and once we see the sunset after 830 our rain chances will turn off for the day and it's gonna be a lot harder to come by rain tomorrow and Friday uh, on the satellite radar. Good mixture of sun and clouds out there. Those clouds are also helping to keep the temperatures down a bit. 83 in Pleasanton uh, in a wider view here. You can see across the state of Texas how rain is a little bit more sparse across North Texas. That's where we've got a ridge of high pressure and this ridge of high pressure is going to settle over uh, tomorrow and Friday, allowing for temperatures to be a little bit hotter and only a 10% chance for rain Thursday and Friday. High temperature tomorrow in the low 90s. But then that ridge of high pressure is going to move off to the west and open up the atmosphere for another chance for rain. A lot like the last couple of days, that's what this 4th of July weekend is going to be like. Scattered showers and storms during the peak heating afternoon hours. Now everybody's going to see rain. And then once we see the sunset, those rain chances will go down. So firework to place Sunday for 4th of July should be all right. And of course, we'll keep you updated. Keep that KSAT Weather Authority app handy if you have any outdoor plans over the over the 4th of July weekend. Ursula and Max. Absolutely. Very nice, though, getting this rain. All right. Thank you so much, Sarah. If walls could talk, downtown murals would have a lot to say. We have a story behind this piece of art right after the break. Behind every mural, there is a special story to tell. In the case of one mural right downtown, there are nearly three dozen tales to share. Stories of African-American men and their lives right here in the Alamo City. Katrina Weber tells us the story of the inspiration that made this work of art in this week's edition of If These Walls Could Talk.
If a person's eyes are the windows to the soul, these faces offer a prime view of 33 different souls, weary of a lifetime of struggle. When I was painting these faces, I could feel their pain. These men worry about themselves. They worry about their teenage boys. Are they going to be coming home? That realization, magnified by the police murder of George Floyd in Minneapolis, inspired renowned artist Lionel Sosa to focus on black men in San Antonio. I assumed that things weren't as tough in San Antonio as they would be other places. But that was an assumption. The mural called Living in My Skin features men and soon to be men from 10 to 90 years old. Politicians, professionals, a former prisoner, all sharing one thing, being treated badly because of their skin color. That's a reality. You know, that's the reality of black people. Even as a business owner and school teacher, Harold Williams says he has seen the ugly side of society. He and the others spared their smiles for the pictures, but bared their souls on camera. It was a therapy session, you know, it helped me to, to vet in a sense. This artwork at 4th and Auditorium Circle may be the only major piece about black people that's not on the east side of town. One of the things that's different about this mural is that it's interactive. You can use your phone to scan the QR codes next to each person's name and watch a video telling their story. My attitude toward uh, the lives of black men has is, is changed my life completely. Sosa hopes his work also will be an eye opener and mind changer for many people. Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. That is something I've got to go check out. Uh, amazing. You can hear more about these stories in a documentary as well on YouTube. That's right. And for more information on how to see it, you can click the link on the story. Just head to KSAT.com. A mom gaining popularity on the internet after taking her toddler son to her job interview. That story coming up in the next half hour. Plus, this western wildfire season on track to be more destructive than last year. That's why lawmakers are stepping up, working on a plan to help firefighters what President Biden wants to accomplish. New today at 5, if you've been using any of the popular food delivery apps to order takeout, you might have noticed some important information is missing. Today at 5, I'll explain why the missing information could make ordering healthy harder. Hmm. It's been a race against time in Surfside, Florida, as rescuers work through the rubble of the building collapse. And tomorrow, President Biden and the First Lady will be visiting the site to see it for themselves. So far, 16 people have been found dead in that pile of concrete. 149 others or more are still unaccounted for. ABC's Morgan Norwood has the latest. As the massive search and rescue operation enters day seven in Surfside, Florida officials asking the federal government for more help, requesting an additional team to backfill their crews before severe weather closes in. This is the attention uh, of the state, of the country, and in some respects, the world, uh, this is hurricane season. The state government's monitoring all storms that are happening. Crews have already removed three million pounds of debris from the collapse. Colonel Golan Vok, who's leading the Israeli rescue team, speaking with CNN, saying they found tunnels and voids within the rubble. We found people. Okay. Unfortunately, they are not alive. Now, officials calling for a grand jury investigation into the partial collapse as details emerge about the condition of the Champlain Tower South before it crumbled. ABC News confirming a letter was sent to residents back in April warning that damage had, quote, gotten significantly worse, that concrete deterioration is accelerating and would begin to multiply exponentially. All of this after a 2018 engineering report revealed the need for the repairs. But the cost was steep. The repairs were priced at 15 million. Residents asked to pay anywhere from 80,000 to 336,000 dollars. Now the lawsuits are mounting. Raisa Rodriguez, who made it out alive, says she's been reporting issues in the building for years. The night of the collapse, she says the building quote swayed like a sheet of paper. 64-year-old Ileana Montagudo narrowly escaping. Something inside of me said, "Run, because this building." will collapse and I start going down fast and I feel crack, crack, crack. Three seconds separate the life 
to, to that. The condo association responding, saying it can't comment on pending litigation. Right now, the search continues as President Joe Biden prepares to travel to Surfside on Thursday. Morgan Norwood, ABC News, Miami Beach, Florida. And speaking of President Joe Biden, he wants to boost U.S. firefighters capacity and prevention efforts for those wildfires in the West Coast. Part of his plan involves temporarily raising pay for federal firefighters, ensuring that no one fighting wildland fires is making less than $15 an hour. He's set to hold a virtual meeting today with governors from western states discussing what is shaping up to be a very active wildfire season. Wildfires burning more than 2,000 square miles this year already. All this comes as western states dealing with severe drought and record heat. As a new Supreme Court ruling is now stating, certain tenants who failed to pay their rent amid the pandemic are now going to get protected. Yesterday, the court officially decided to keep the CDC moratorium on evictions in place until July 31st. A district court had ruled in favor of a group of landlords and real estate companies who had wanted that policy lifted so they could collect payments. Well, this ruling put on hold pending the appeal and then the DC court circuit court declined to lift the stay. So the eviction order first went into effect in September of last year. Initially, it was set to expire at the end of 2020, but it's been extended four times already, and it's going to stay in place. Back here at home, taking a live look out of the Alamo City. 86 degrees out there, but Sarah Spivey, you're telling us some people might be seeing showers. Yeah, they are right now across parts of the Alamo City and points to the west. And, and even when you look out at one of our live cam views, you can see those puffy cumulus clouds are developing in the vertical. Uh, and that means that we have the chance to see some rain once again this afternoon. It is 85 degrees outside, but with high humidity, it feels like 91. Temperatures are probably only going to get a few more degrees higher than this as we see rain chances increase this afternoon. Much like the last couple of days, if you don't get rain, you'll at least get some of that rain cooled air, which is in the forecast this afternoon. And as I mentioned, we do have some rain in the area. Uh, mainly right now, it's uh, in western Bear County and out toward Medina County near Castroville, Hondo, and even the Medina Lake area. And down in Wilson County near Floresville, uh, we're seeing some showers too, and a couple of showers out near the Ma Madison High School area on the northeast side of town. Let's talk for a moment about the tropics because there is a system out there that we're going to be watching carefully over the next couple of days and into next week. An unorganized area of storminess out in the Atlantic has a very high chance of becoming at least tropical storm Elsa. Uh, and it is right now forecast to head through the Lesser Antilles and potentially through uh, the Dominican Republic, Haiti area, and through uh, Cuba as well before potentially making it out toward uh, the eastern Gulf. But we'll keep an eye on things. Again, we've got a long time to look at this and to analyze it. Uh, for now, though, our biggest weather story is going to be the chance for some rain over the 4th of July weekend. So I'll have a look at that coming up in just a bit. Max and Ursula. Thank you, Sarah. Fourth of July just a few days away, but this year your celebrations could be a bit more expensive. The price increase that you can expect, we're going to explain just ahead. Harry Potter making his magical return to Broadway. Oh. Details on the new show and when it hits the stage. Coming up in the spotlight. Plus, the FAA, the Federal Aviation Administration, wants passengers to know they will not tolerate bad behavior on their flights. The warning they have for travelers. The Federal Aviation Administration reminding people there are pricey consequences if you misbehave on flights. The agency posting a photo on Twitter that says you could have spent $35,000 on a brand new truck, but instead you're paying a fine because you punched a flight attendant. Now, that is in reference to the amount that the FAA can fine unruly passengers. The agency receiving more than 3,200 such reports since enacting a zero tolerance policy at the beginning of 2021. Most of the confrontations are over mask violations. So far, the FAA has identified potential violations in more than 490 cases and has started enforcement actions in 61 of them. This year's July 4th barbecue might cost you a little bit more. The American Farm Bureau says that a cookout for 10 people will run about 
59 and a half dollars and that is up 16 cents from the year before the bureau bases its analysis on the cost of popular meat sides and desserts those grill rasters out there that can rest easy on the other hand the farm bureau adds that the beef and pork processing issues that were happening during the pandemic have now been resolved now to the mom finding internet fame after taking her toddler son to a job interview abc's will gans has the story Baby Milo is a happy camper now, but he and his mom, Maggie Mundwiller, have had quite the year. Six weeks after I had Milo, I was laid off from my job that I had been at for years. COVID precautions and doctor recommendations made it tough to find childcare while juggling her search for a new job. I missed a couple of interviews trying to plan it around Milo's naps just didn't work out. Until a recent last minute request for an interview in person left Maggie scrambling. Hey, I'm really sorry. I, I don't have childcare, so I'll probably have to reschedule. And he quickly replied, um, we're child friendly with an emoji and heart eyes. <laughs> <laughs> so she decided to bring Milo with her, combing his hair, putting on a seersucker suit, washing the wheels of his stroller, even bringing his own resume. Skills include destroying a clean space in 30 seconds and spotting a dog a mile away. The video really resonating with parents across the country, racking up 8.6 million views on TikTok. I mean, is your mind blown? Yeah, totally. These are the things that everyone else is feeling. The National Women's Law Center reports that more than 2 million women have left the workforce since the pandemic began. I try not to let the comments get to me, but I will say there are a couple that say a woman's place is in the home, and I strongly disagree. A woman's place is wherever she wants to be. Maggie saying she's grateful to spotlight the issue affecting so many American families. Really a child care crisis. We need to invest in the employees and invest in our children's futures. So the question of the hour, did Maggie get the job? The company has indeed extended an offer. She hasn't accepted just yet, but safe to say Milo is her good luck charm. Will Gans, ABC News, New York. I think Milo's got a big future ahead of him. He was fantastic. The seersucker suit got me. I know, but did you see him destroying the flowers? I mean, she's right. That's a skill. That go. is a skill. Special skill. <laughs> well, looking outside right now in live cam, you can see those puffy cumulus clouds. We are seeing some showers out there. I'll show you the radar coming up after the break. But for now, Aquifer's doing good. It enjoyed a good drink of water up about a three tenths of a foot over the past 24 hours. And that uh, 10 day average still looks good. No stage water one water restrictions in our future just yet. Unfortunately, though, uh, the mold is very high today, past 18,000. This is the highest I've seen mold in a little while. You know, we take the good with the bad, right? You get a little rain, the mold goes up. Got a little bit more rain in our forecast, but this one comes on 4th of July weekend. It's not the end of the world, though. Uh, I'll tell you what I mean coming up in just a bit. Welcome back. 4th of July just around the corner. Any plans for Independence Day? I am going to see my parents for the first time in over a year. Nice. Hey, woo, that's awesome, I Ursula. Mean, I know really a lot of great. people have, have had to go through this as well, so yeah. it's going to be a great weekend for our family. Well, I hope Absolutely. the weather cooperates with you out there. For us, so over 4th of July weekend, we are going to have some areas of showers and storms, but it's going to be a lot like the last couple of days where it'll be hit or miss. So don't cancel any of those backyard barbecues. Just keep your umbrella handy and you should be all right. Okay, so, so far for this month, uh, not including today, we've had a good amount of rain. We've had a little bit shy of two and a half inches of rainfall so far this month. Now that is below average by almost three quarters of an inch of rainfall, but we've still seen more than 17 and a half inches of rain since January 1st and drought conditions are non-existent around San Antonio. So, so again, that's some good news. We've had a couple of dry spells here, but we've at least had a little bit of rain every week of June. Uh, now, as we head into July, our rain chances are also going to be fairly high, uh, which is great. Usually in July, it can be pretty dry. So it's nice that we're going to be able to start that summer month uh, with uh, some of that uh, rain Fall. And speaking of rain, we do have some rain on the radar at the moment. Right now it's very spotty in nature. And as we head into the later hours of the afternoon, we'll be able to see much like the last couple of days, areas of storms scattered in nature as well. But let's go ahead and highlight a couple of these areas. First, I'll take you out toward Medina County, uh, right between Castroville and Hondo, a nice little light rain shower there. These are all moving to the northwest near Redeal uh, 
Rio Medina. Some light to moderate rain as well. This is going to be pushing up through the Medina Lake area. Medina Lake and still unfortunately very low. The watershed for Medina Lake is just so tiny and we haven't had any major heavy, heavy rain over the watershed uh, that's done much uh, to allow for uh, increasing in the lake levels. We do have a couple of showers out right near the airport there uh, and right near Live Oak. These are moving to the northwest as well. And a wider view uh, right near Somerset as well as Wilson, Carnes, and uh, parts of Atascosa County. Really the only lightning that we've been seeing throughout the day today is across parts of the coastal communities, but even that lightning is few and far between. So throughout the rest of the day, about a 40% chance for some scattered showers and storms. Much like the last couple of days, if you do get a storm, the rain will be heavy at times, but we are not expecting severe weather. Good mixture of sun and clouds out there right now, helping to keep temperatures down uh, just a bit. Cooler than seasonably average. We usually see a high temperature right around 93, 94 this time of year. And I think temperatures should only go up by about maximum five degrees from where they're at right now. 85 it's at the airport, 84 in Hondo, 87 in Del Rio, 85 in New Braunfels. And even if you don't get rain, that rain cool there should make its way to a good portion of us this afternoon. Uh, and 40%, that's, that's the chance for rain as it has been the last couple of days uh, throughout the rest of the afternoon. And once the sun set, tap turns off. A wider view here, you can see across North Texas that it's fairly quiet at the moment. That's where we've got the center of high pressure. High means dry, and so as it moves over, uh, we're going to see only a 10% chance for a stray shower tomorrow and Friday. So not as active as the last couple of days have been, and tomorrow will be a little bit more toasty. High temperatures in the low 90s, but that high pressure system will move off to the west and open up the atmosphere to see a few more pulses of energy, which will give us our chance for uh, scattered showers and storms over the 4th of July weekend, much like the last couple of days, scattered downpours, a quick one inch of rain is possible. No severe weather possible. Just keep a radar handy on our Weather Authority app and have a, a place to go if you do get a thunderstorm. Just because, you know, when thunder roars, it's good to go indoors and avoid the possibility of lightning strikes. The good news is I think for any kind of 4th of July firework displays, we should see the rain like the last couple of days and around the sunset hour. Ursula and Perfect Max. timing. Thank yep. you, Sarah. A new crime thriller headed to theaters. How the director was able to convince two big actors to take part in this project oh. coming up in the spotlight. Welcome back. A new movie to tell you about director Steven Soderbergh's latest crime thriller taking place in mid 20th century Detroit. CNN's Rick Damagella talked with the cast of No Sudden Move. You said a man wants to see me. Alley out back. Don Cheadle and Benicio Del Toro lead an ensemble cast in No Sudden Move. Everything is normal, except... The film was shot in Detroit, Michigan in 2020 in a COVID safety bubble. We finished early and, you know, under budget, so... Uh, and, and we're still able and nothing was sacrificed. You know, I think the movie is really strong and the performances are great and the story works. And uh, I think, you know, from the feedback that we're getting, people are really entertained and that's the whole point, right? And reunites both actors with director Steven Soderbergh. He's the comandante. He's, he's the he's the jefe. You know, he called me up. He said he was doing this movie with Don Cheadle, who I wanted to work with for as long as I've known him. Um, Likewise. And uh, when he called me up, I didn't even read the script. I said yes. The ensemble includes John Hamm, Ray Liotta, Brendan Fraser, and Bill Duke. Tell him I'll be there. He's really a nice guy just trying to do his job, you know? And I'm and he's always judged. So I'm just simply saying it's like um, he's trying his best to do the best he can, and he's facing some people who are worse than him. It does feel like you're stepping back in time as period pieces go. This this picture really nails the year 1954. From the houses, the decor, the cars, everything. Why are you doing this, man? Because I'm going to get what's mine. In Hollywood, I'm Rick Damagella. All right, a new Harry Potter show is headed to the stage. Harry Potter and the Cursed Child will be making its premiere on Broadway in November. That play is set 19 years after Harry, Ron, and Hermione saved the wizard world. 
a new generation of kids will be attending Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry, but Harry, Ron, and Hermione killed it. Killed it again. <laughs> While older is still around, the reimagined Harry Potter and the Cursed Child debuts on November 16th. Do you yes, go see it? I had issues pronouncing her name. No, she's great. She's great. Um, she's I all grown up it. now. She is, well, in she has, real she, life. She's a mom, too, in the yeah. play, I guess. Wow. There you go. All right. A lot going on at SA Live. How's it going over there? Oh, I tell you, we got a little bit of everything today, oh, yes. and we are celebrating the 4th of July in the sweetest way. Yes. Marina Papiashvili from Piggy's Bakery is here with a great idea. If you want to get that perfect slice out of your cake. I've never yeah. seen this. So what you is it you're doing there? You need to use a hot knife to and have a perfect, pretty slice of your cake. And she's about to cut into yeah. this beautiful cake. Tell us again what's inside. It's a blackberry divine. Ooh, Look at how easy that. that was. It has a, from now on, you chocolate liars, <gasps> cho uh, black, blackberry filling, Ooh. and blackberry oh my cheesecake inside. My mouth is watering. Yeah. Keep the knife. I never yes. learned something new today, guys. Right? Thank you and so much. And wait till you see the other treats she have. Plus, SA Live is reaching new heights today. Yes, Aqua Acro is here. All the performers from this amazing team. And we may give it a try. Look at her go. I don't know. I don't yeah. know. Wait, do what we have it take? possibly go wrong? <laughs> and then we're going to slow things down. And thank goodness, because we've got Holly Fletcher here, owner of Fletcher Reptile and Bird Rescue with and some, <laughs> some of her some animals. Look at Munchkin, <laughs> he's so cute. And we also want to know if you have a hidden talent, because you know we have all these performers here today, so we'll share that. Yes. I, I think Fiona Let has us plenty. know at SA Live KSAT on Facebook and Twitter what your hidden talent is, and we'll share that when SA Live continues in just a few minutes.